If you've ever anticipated something, you're like, oh my God, can't wait to meet this person. Oh my God, I can't wait to go on to a Hawaii trip. Oh my God, I can't wait to have chocolate cake. If you've ever anticipated anything, dopamine that was released in your brain. And if you don't have the right amount of dopamine, you will do dangerous things to chase dopamine. So you ever hear people when they're like, oh, I'm going skydiving today. I'm going to jump out of a perfectly good airplane and hurl myself to the earth. It's fun, <laughs> right? Or I'm going to go bungee cord jumping. I'm going, to, I'm going to go buy a brand new motorcycle. I'm going to fly down the road. They're chasing dopamine. You ever hear someone say, I'm an adrenaline junkie? No, you're not an adrenaline You're a dopamine junkie. Get your drugs straight. Get your drugs straight, okay? Dopamine kicks in that brain long before adrenaline is going to do any type of behavior in the body. But here's the thing. You need the right amount of dopamine. You have to have the right. Too much, no good. Too little, no good. You need the right amount. If you have the right amount, happiness is in your future. If you have too little dopamine, though, that's when you get depression. That's when you get anxiety. People know low dopamine is not a good thing. When you have too low of a dopamine, too low a dopamine, you know what you start to lose? You start to lose controlled movement. Controlled movement. So if you've ever heard of a Parkinson's patient, you ever heard of Parkinson's? Parkinson's patients, what do they do? They have a shaking arm, right? They can't, they can't control their arm. Why is that? That's because of a low amount of dopamine in the brain, right? Now, what if I was a five-year-old kid, 10-year-old kid, and I had ants in my pants, and I'm moving around a lot, and I can't really do this. John, just take a seat. Yeah, I, I can't really do it. What would you call me? You would call me hyperactive, right? You would say, oh, there's something wrong with this kid. He can't sit down. But here's the deal. He's just got too low dopamine in his brain. Why are you bringing up dopamine, John? Because what do you think decreases dopamine in the brain? Cortisol. That stress hormone. When you have that stress hormone, cortisol leaking long term, that starts to lower dopamine in the brain. See, a lot of people sit back and they're like, oh, little Johnny's got ADHD. I know what to do. Put him on ADHD medication. Do you know what that stuff does? Adderall, Ritalin, all that stuff. Do you know, it's been proven to do this. It floods the brain with dopamine because you know what the theory on all that garbage is? The theory is this. Because your kid can't concentrate, one of the roles of dopamine is concentration. It does a lot of other things, but one of its roles is, dope, is, is concentration. So the theory is this. If you can't concentrate, you can't sit right, your dopamine receptors in your brain must be broken. So we're going to give you a drug that releases more dopamine in the brain, which will fix the broken receptors. That's the theory that was never proven. DeCampo disproved it in 2013, though, when they showed this. There was nothing wrong with the receptors and dopamine in the brain. These drugs just rushed tons of dopamine in the brain, which short-term helped the kid concentrate, short-term. But you know what else would do the exact same thing? If I gave a kid a line of cocaine. It would do the exact same thing. It stimulates the brain. A lot of people think that these calm the brain down. No, these are stimulants to the brains. They stimulate the brain, and that's why these kids short-term focus in on something. But here's the problem. They found that these drugs didn't last long term. And they were like, how come? How co if, if there's a dopamine receptor problem, how come that it's not lasting long term? So DeCampo found this. There's, nothing, there's no problem with the receptor. It just floods dopamine. So they said, well, what is it? So Sawa did another study, and they said it's actually not dopamine. It's cortisol. It's the amount of cortisol that's telling the receptors in the brain not to release dopamine. Do you understand me? It's a big difference of your receptors are broken and can't release it and cortisol telling it not to release. Those are completely different things.